Hello everyone, good evening, this is Dr. Vaughn. It's about 10 o'clock on Thursday. We're going to try to record a short video to show you how to come up with the uh, prediction interval. So we're looking at this question 23. We uh, did a problem like this in class. In class, the first thing we're going to do is start by copying our data over into a clipboard. I'm going to open up my Excel window, paste the set of data actually into this window. I'm going to take a, a box here and put the mean and the standard deviation. We're going to move these in our computation. And I'm going to compute the mean of the x variables by doing equals average dragging through these cells. And for standard deviation, I'm going to use the sample standard deviation, stdev.s. And again, drag through these. So that's going to be the mean and the standard deviation of the x variable. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually run the regression analysis. So we'll go to our data analysis tool pack. We'll select the regression. Click OK. For the y range, we'll use the temperature variables. For the x range, we'll use the altitude variables. We do have labels. We are going to do a confidence level at a 95%. I want to input the data actually into my spreadsheet here into this cell and then I'll click OK. So here's all our output. The first couple of questions in Pearson ask us about the explained variation which is the sum of the squares for the regression 10942.87 10942.87 and the second question asks about the unexplained variation, which in Excel is this uh, residual sum of squares, 61.13228, Now we're going to go on to find the prediction interval. So this is the hard part. The one thing I want to notice is that we have a uh, an x value of 63.27 or 6.327. So I'm going to put some values up here. This is our x value. 6.327. Our predicted y value which is the y hat. This we're going to use the regression model, so equals the coefficient from the regression model plus the other coefficient multiplied by our x value. That's our predicted y value. Now we're going to need a couple more cells here. We're going to need the t value. The t value we can do by equaling the t uh, inverse distribution. We can go with the two-tailed version put in a 0 0.05 because we're using a 95% confidence interval and the degrees of freedom is the n which is 7 minus 2 which can actually be found as the residual degrees of freedom right over here. So there's our t value. The next thing we're going to need is the standard error of the prediction. And then the standard error of the prediction is not the same as the standard error of the regression but we are going to use this standard error of the regression in the computation of this standard error of the prediction. So the formula that we're going to use for the standard error of the prediction is slightly different than the one that is given in the book. It's the formula shown right here. So this S is going to be the standard error from the regression which we can actually grab from the output from the data analysis tool pack. So we're going to have to manually do all this other stuff with the big square root and the 1 plus 1 over n and then x minus x bar, that's the mean that we grabbed from over here, the standard deviation of the x, which we computed already over here. We're going to square each of those and then divide by n minus 1, which we'll be able to grab. So uh, we'll, we'll go back and reference this particular formula, but this is a slightly different version. They factored out an n and done a little simplification in the bottom so you don't have all those sigma formulas floating around. You can use those other formulas and they'll work just fine. All right, so the first thing we're going to do for our standard error prediction is equals. We're going to grab the standard error term from over here. We're going to multiply by the square root. That's the big square root. I'm going to give myself some parentheses. The 1 plus, and I'm going to do 1 divided by n. So I like to put this in parentheses. Not sure if you have to or not. The n is over here. 
Okay, so now we go on to the plus. So, so, far, so far we have the big square root. We have 1 plus 1 over n. Now I need plus, and now I need to describe this quotient right here. Okay, so plus, I'm going to do a big parentheses for the quotient. I'm going to do another parentheses for the numerator. And we're going to take x minus x bar quantity squared. So I'll take the x value, which is right here, and subtract the mean of the x's, which is over here. And you can either just use an up caret for squaring this operation, or you could do times and then multiply it by itself. And that's the end of the numerator function. Now for the denominator function, I'm going to put another parentheses. First thing we need to do is do the standard deviation squared, which I'll grab from over here, the standard deviation raised to the second power. Close parentheses. Oh, not yet. So I'm going to put an extra parentheses in for the square. And then times, I need n minus 1, so n is 7, n minus 1 is 6, which I can actually grab from just right here. So that's the end of the denominator, and then that's the end of the square root function, and that should be the end of my standard error. So this number right here, 4.07, is my standard error of the prediction. Uh, one more thing I'm going to need, I'll put it over here, is the margin of error. The margin of error is going to equal the product of the t value that we computed and the standard error term that we computed over here. And finally, we're ready to find our upper and lower bounds of our prediction interval. So we're going to start for the upper bound. We're going to start with our equals. The x value, we're making a prediction. I'm sorry, the y value. And then we're going to add the margin of error. That's our upper value. And for the lower value, we're going to equal our predicted y value, and then minus the margin of error. So these are our upper and lower bounds of our prediction interval. We'll jump over to Pearson really quick and make sure that we got it right. So the lower interval, the lower bound of our prediction interval is 37.9213. Thirty-seven point nine two one three, and the upper limit of our prediction interval is fifty-eight point eight six one four. Fifty-eight point eight six one four. Fifty-eight point eight six one four. And check our answer, and you see that we got it right. Okay, so this is how you can do uh, a prediction interval in Excel. It's a little bit of a hassle in programming in this formula. Uh, hopefully you can rewind, stop this video, watch it, and then follow along and get through your homework. And when you go to do the next problem, the problem 24, you just have to do basically the same thing. So they give you some different kinds of uh, variables along the way, but you're going to have to manually compute this standard error of the prediction. You're going to have to get the t-value. They either give it to you or you're going to have to compute it. The t-value times the standard error of the prediction will give you the margin of error. And then the margin of error, you add that and subtract that from the predicted y value, and it will give the bounds of your prediction interval. Uh, this has been Dr. Vaughn, and it's late at night, um, but I hope you uh, find this video useful. Hope you all have a good night. Take care.